back to the channel I'm in my office here and this is the episode 5 so far of the Co-England series uh, first episode we went over how to register for a tournament the second episode we went over the rules and regulations uh, on how to fish in the BFLs and then as well as in the third episode we went over contingency programs potential sponsors things that potentially that you may have or may want to be, be able to look into uh, fishing as a co or in the BFLs the fourth episode this last episode that we checked out was uh, preparing a checklist getting a checklist together getting it ready to go getting yourself ready to go in order to meet your or go to your tournament up to this point so now this episode we are covering attending the meeting and what to do and general information to help you uh, be able to break down what it is you guys are going to do out on the lake during tournament time so first of all Due to the vid, there is no meetings that you will attend. It's all virtual meetings. It's all through over the phone. I started doing co-angling in 2020. I fished two, and then I fished four, and then I fished all last year. So this year it's going to be a full rack for me again. Um, it's up to you. You can pick as many, as little as one, to however many you want to do. And each time it's always been virtual, over the phone, listening in, as well as you get a a packet uh, emailed to you stating that you you have been confirmed your entry and your rules and regulations specifically for that lake is on there. Wherever your lake is at, it's going to be 6.30 p.m., okay? So 6.30 p.m., either for me, since I am in Eastern Time, and Del Hollow is in Central Time, it would be 7.30 here in my local area. If I'm staying down there overnight, which I always do, I always want to be able to be closer to the lake so I can sleep and not have to drive, then it will be 6.30 p.m. And at 6.30 p.m. you just go in, log in, it's like a Teams meeting or some type of meeting. Usually I do it over the phone. Uh, it's the director for that particular division. Uh, Mountain Division, Music City Division, Buckeye Division, Hoosier, LBL, uh, Shenandoah, you know, all those divisions. You always have a director and the director is there to chat about uh, the rules and regulations for that day he'll go over all that and everything else um, he'll go over all the contingency programs uh, he will say please let us know if you're in the contingencies you let him know usually try to do that whenever you sign up let him know that hey I have a contingency with epic baits or whatever you know uh, general tires you know I, I don't know so you go in there uh, or you're using the you're on the phone and it'll talk you're it'll talk probably approximately about 15 to 20 minutes then they said we're going to send out a text message right now so you want to make sure your phone number is updated with the correct carrier and the phone number so like for instance if you were fishing last year uh, and you had Sprint let's say or Verizon or whatever company you had right or have and you decide to switch companies but you keep the same number so for instance you go from Verizon to AT&T or you go from AT&T to T-Mobile something like that you need to let the girls know at MLF and they'll make sure it gets updated in your preferences because if they try to send out a text message out to you and it doesn't go then you will not get a hold of your boater so that is the first strike that you have with your boater and that's not a very good first impression um, 
if you do get everything sorted out let's say if you get everything sorted out you get the text message hey this is your boater this is your number this is your uh, launch time and your return time launch times the same for everyone if you start at 7 you start at 7 you might be able to fish until 430 it might be a late draw whatever um, that's the price you gotta pay especially if there's a morning bite <laughs> and your boaters none but morning bite I mean that's a something to draw so that's the reason why your boaters down there to figure out a morning and afternoon you know bites and then be able to strategically say okay if I if I leave out of here at it launches at 7 and you leave out of here at 7:10, and I make my run to wherever I'm going for instance Del Hollow you make that run down there by the dam can I catch fish during that window of opportunity uh, as a co-angler you don't have to worry about that you just have to make sure that you need to prepare to throw things that that you know the water temperature water clarity uh, air temperature not so much but you know the noisy wind stuff like that we'll rewind back to where we was at um, so you attend the meeting the meeting is done you get the invite or you get the text message you call your boater. Be the person that calls your boater. The boater can be a male or female. There's a lot of females that I have seen on circuit. Um, so, you know, be respectful for those. Um, the reason why I keep also looking over here at my, uh, I have notes that I took so I don't forget where I'm at or whatever. <clears throat> So my notes are over here, sorry. I apologize for not, for looking away, but. So, um, when you call your boater, uh, introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Jason Emery. I'm your co-angler for tomorrow. I'm excited to be here. Uh, how, how are you doing? How's it looking? What are you seeing? Uh, are we gonna be doing some onshore, offshore? Uh, things um, do you have any recommendations that I probably should or should not bring uh, I've been told to bring an A-Rig okay I'll bring an A-Rig I have the pole for it as part of my checklist I bring all my equipment that way I can always leave it in my truck if I don't want it or I can't use it I take four to five poles on the boat if I can't catch fish with those four to five poles, I don't need to be fishing. So I kind of limit, I kind of get one, I kind of make sure I take what I need to take and that's it. If it's for some, I'll make it work. If it's something that it doesn't work right, I'll make it work. You know, I have a couple specialty poles. I have some for the A-Rig. I have a specialty pole for jerk baits and, and crank baits and chatter baits you know those things so you would have medium heavy would be your all-purpose right pull rod and reel so um, generalize the information I'm not here to tell you I need to know what color you're throwing where you're throwing it at what you're doing don't be like that be open-minded with the guy or gal be open-minded with the boater. You are there as a co-angler to learn. You are there to understand why that, or learn and figure out, or understand why that boater did what they did, how they did it, why they position a certain way, why they ask questions throughout the day. The boater's not going to get upset at you by asking questions. So. So anyway, the very first thing is that's your generalized information that that'll help you be prepared for the tournament the next day. Also, when where do you want to meet? Do you want to meet at the ramp? Do you want to meet off site? What I mean by off site is um, outside of Starry Point, right? 
I'm sorry, outside of Star Point Resort, because it gets busy down there with all these boaters and co-anglers all trying to find a parking spot. It's best if you can go off-site. Uh, meet them up the hill. Uh, meet them at their hotel. Uh, meet them at a different boat launch. I did that. I did that uh, last year. I absolutely loved it. I actually love to meet off-site and jump in their vehicle and drive down with them. Uh, I can put my poles and everything all just in there. You're going to have time after boat check and everything to put your equipment up and everything else. So uh, you ask where you want to meet at. Uh, at the ramp or off-site. So make sure you ask that question. Uh, second question, uh, you have to ask this of yourself. As a co-angler, the boater will not ask you to back up a boat unless you're comfortable. I own a boat. I tell him, I said, yes, I backed up several boats. I have no problem backing up, backing you, launching out, parking your trailer. It's going to be dark. You know, can you park? Uh, you may be able to launch the boat, but can you park a truck or a vehicle with a trailer? That is huge because there's a lot of things that's going on. Uh, a lot of tight spots that you have to squeeze a lot of times. If you let them know, say, hey, I cannot back up a boat. Uh, he he or she will rather you be up front with that aspect than just be like, yeah, I can do it, and then totally jack it up when they got thousands of dollars wrapped up into their boats. You're talking an $80,000 boat or more. Some that are less than that, but still, it's quite expensive. They got their vehicle, they got their trailer, they got their boat. These are all things explained to them on the phone. So that way they can be prepared. So if it says you can't back up a boat or you can't launch a boat and park the boat. So what he, what he or she is going to end up doing is getting there early so they can put in early without having any hesitation because they won't. You can't drive the boat. It's not you can't drive your, the boat. Okay. Now, I guess an emergency. I would say screw it I'd be disqualified but that's just me because I can drive a boat and if I had to in an emergency I would drive a boat but normally you will not drive a boat it's somebody's boat you're not gonna drive it don't be ashamed about it there's a lot of people that don't understand how to back up a boat trailer or anything I just happen to be blessed to back up multi-billion dollar aircraft uh, by towing them so I understand that so when it comes to a boat and I own a boat I, I tend to back up and understand how to back them up and get them sorted out and you know park the vehicle I never I never ask my boater for specifics I never say well wh where exactly are you fishing at are, are you fishing closer to the shore like 20 feet off the, the shore because I need to know because according to you know Novonics it, it says it's a 30 foot drop I don't need to know that we'll figure it out when I get there right that's the that's the the cool thing that's something I don't uh, I recommend not for you to be in that uh, that bad off to I just think that you that he he or she has to tell you exactly what you're doing because it's not their job to do that. It's your it's their job to put you on fish. It's your job to catch them. I always go in with open mind, positive attitude. Understand that, hey, we are here. We're gonna have fun. Okay, have fun with it. We're going to work together as a team. Uh, you are in the same boat. Literally in the same boat. So you need to work together as a team. Uh, you go in there with an open mind. You go in there with a positive attitude. You go in there and encourage each other. And you'll be surprised how rewarding it is. It's kind of cool because there's... Since uh, last year, after... 
the whole blow up at Indian Lake for me just continue to stay positive. Uh, as much as I, I despised being talked down to at 45, uh, I stay positive and positivity won. Unfortunately, he passed away, but that's neither here nor there, but I was able to enjoy fishing again and enjoy catching some fish and I enjoy you know meeting those people meeting those those individuals that say hey it was because of you I started fishing and uh, I watched your videos and it wasn't that that bad I mean you pay a hundred and ten dollars and you get to fish in a one-day tournament for eight hours at least the doors open up for you when you're there the people the boaters are awesome uh, you know, something else that, that I didn't think about until just now is while you're on that phone and you are talking to your boater, find out if your boater's okay with you filming. I've been told not to film. And you know what? That's okay. I'm not here to bust his chops. Because here's the thing. If he tells me not to film, tells me not to film, I'm not going to film. I'm just not going to be that way. I'm not going to destroy that relationship and the thing is, is it's his boat his it's their boat her his or her boat and you are a guest on that boat and you won't throw your trash around you clean up after yourself time to put on your big boy britches and put and clean up after yourself so i i'm ecstatic to get started um I think that is all between the boater and the co. Uh, go out, have fun with those. If you if you decide to start fishing because of this, let me know in the comments section. Let me know if ask any questions that you want in the comments section. I am always excited to talk fishing with you guys. I'm always excited to bring you better content, or more content. Uh, and the co England side, like I said, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comment section below. Share this out to other people that you believe that want to do some tournament fishing. Have them come over. It's all good. I have no problems with that. If they have questions, you can also contact uh, social media. It's down in the description. You can start, you can bass fish in a tournament with three rods. You don't need a whole lot of rods. You don't need a whole lot of reels. You know what's, you know what is more, you know what's the best thing to do? Go behind people and catch fish. Fish don't care what kind of rod and reel you guys have. It's more of a personal preference. Some people can get away with ugly sticks and catch a lot more fish with ugly sticks and dock demons and all this other stuff compared to Daiwa Tatulas or SLX DCs and all this other stuff, you know, two, three, four hundred dollar reels and two or three, four hundred dollar rods. They can go out there with an ugly stick and catch as much fish. So thank you for swinging by. Thank you for clicking on this video. That is all we have for today. As always, God bless. Tight lines. We are out of here. Deuce.